Ambio Plus is the second soundbar from Sennheiser to incorporate its immersive audio technology. But how it sounds compared to my 5.2.4 high-end home theater Dolby Atmos setup and plus, do you really need to purchase also separately the Ambeo subwoofer to have a full immersive experience? Then keep watching and subscribe to the channel because in this video review we are going to discuss about everything. Dimensions are not ultra crazy, something that I experienced with my first soundbar that was the Samsung Q90R. And as far I remember was pretty huge compared to this one, but I'm not sure about it because I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. In any case, it's smaller than my 65-inch LG TV with a size that is probably closer to the 48-inch one. Build quality at first touch is really impressive with a front side and back wrapped in a sort of cloth that is giving to the Ambio Plus a touch of premium product feeling, rather than a trivial and dull plastic audio product, right? On the rear connection we can find one HDMI EARC and two HDMI 2.0, digital and analog input and output, plus the possibility to connect a wired subwoofer, if you would like, but something that actually I appreciate in soundbars is the possibility to connect a wireless subwoofer and I tested the Ambio subwoofer but we'll speak about it just in a moment later. A well organized front touch control panel and a compact beautiful made remote control will give you all you need like volume control, six different profile and disable or enable night and Ambio modus. The volume level is well visible on the touch control panel thanks to a beautiful white LED status. Something that will not flash you, don't worry about it, in any case you can adjust the brightness from the application. Ambeo Plus is powered by nine digital amplifiers that are providing 400 watt total. So you have really all the power that you need. And as we will see it in sound quality, the soundbar is playing really, really loud. So nine drivers that are facing upwards outside center with a carefully calculated angles to create a sort of immersive sounds. And nice to see that probably just Sennheiser and Sony, if I'm not wrong, are compatible with DTSX, Dolby Atmos and the Sony 360 sound audio format, all this stuff. So you have really all what you need. From the application you can also visualize which format you are playing, same things on the soundbar. For example, when we play any Dolby Atmos contents, we will have a visible LED on the touch screen control panel. And actually something that I really like because once I was streaming a Dolby Atmos movie from Netflix, and something was wrong, I didn't get this immersive experience. And then I checked the LED status, was not on. I checked the HDMI settings and the output was PCM rather than pass-through. I enabled the pass-through and tuck, LED status was on and I got the feeling to be really inside a movie. So don't forget to check also the settings of your TV. Sennheiser Smart App is the same one that I used for Sennheiser headphones, the Momentum 4 and the Momentum True Wireless 3 review available in descriptions. Beautiful, I use these headphones and earbuds every day. At gym, at work, they are my favorite. The app is well made, stable and responsive. As always, the first things to do is a firmware update. So let's have a short conversation regarding the positions. I know that it's something basic, but it can be that many of you don't know how to do it, right? The problem is this is a soundbar that requires space. So for sure, don't place it above the TV. So under the TV, not on the ground, it will be fine. So now I just place it like that for shut this video, but it will need space on this position because it has to fire the sounds on your left and on your right. And same things for the Dolby Atmos speaker, they have to fire on your ceiling because with the reflections you will have this Dolby Atmos feeling, right? 
So for sure you don't want to push it under the TV, but something more outside to get all the right reflections on your head. So take it in consideration that it will need space. Other things here on my studio, I have a full acoustic treatment, something that I need for my gears and hi-fi stereo review. So if you look my ceiling, for example, you will find this bass strap absorber. Same things behind my couch are full of bass strap. What I want to say is that it's crazy to see that a soundbar is able to give me a full immersive reproductions even with the acoustic treatment. And something really important, don't forget to do the calibration. And here I have to read an email that I sent to the Sennheiser product manager asking how this calibration actually is working. Because you will not need any external microphone like we do with receiver, right? Here I have a Yamaha receiver. We put, we place the external microphone and we calibrate in the listening positions. But here is not working like that. So what he told me was, the advanced Ambeo self-calibration sends out sound waves in different frequencies in the room and measures the reflections from the room with the built-in microphone. This way the soundbar knows where there is a wall or other blank surface to use for sound reflections. It then calibrates the Ambeo algorithm to work perfectly with the specific room circumstances and places virtual speaker all around you to create a virtual 7.1.4 speaker setup. Basically, Ambio Calibrations technology can work with space. Understand? So back to the acoustic treatment that I have. After I performed the calibrations, oh God, everything changed. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I was really impressed. So subwoofer, why you need one? Well, it will give you a visceral viewing experience, something that for sure won't be forgotten. And I'm not speaking only about actions, explosions, but also about a more immersive feeling that plays the audience in the middles of the movie. Ozark, for example, is a great example of drama with suspenseful scenes that cleverly used audio beats and effects to instill the fear into who is watching. I have to say that also with a subwoofer, the Ambio Plus was able to give me a truly intimate viewing experience that was solid, firm and deep. Going back on actions and explosions, actually let's do a sound demo test. I did a recording with a binaural microphone and if you have a headphones that is actually really, really affordable like the Sennheiser HD 560S, probably the best dynamic headphones in his price range category. It's crazy. It will give you bass, beautiful, clear effects. Just wear it because I did three tests for every movie. First test, it will be only the soundbar. Second test, it will be soundbar plus subwoofer. And test number three, it will be just the soundbar with a plus six on the bass, because from the applications you can equalize a little bit, of course, at your taste. So I don't know if you notice it, but in John Williams, when it's come to reproduce bass drums in a big orchestra, also with that subwoofer, the Ambio Plus got power, was rich and playing in a plentiful way without problem. Plus Atmos effect where, oh my God, I was surrounded by the audience as if I was sitting with them. Really, this is the first soundbar Atmos that really giving me these effects. Of course, adding a subwoofer, it will add 
more physicality, right? So you have the test, just take it in consideration. I forget to say that I played this Blu-ray with my PlayStation 5. I'm not a video freak, for me the PlayStation 5 plus the LG OLED is more than enough. I'm more an audio freak rather than a video. Mad Max is a test that is present in all my subwoofer and movie <laughs> comparisons and reviews. For test subwoofer is just phenomenal. Once, I was a cop, a road warrior searching for a righteous cause. As the world fell, each of us in our own way was broken. It was hard to know who was more crazy. Me. Or else. And here, funny, in the first scene, the voice was so deep and realistic. I thought that the subwoofer was actually enabled. I checked the app, was disabled. I had to stand up for my couch and check with my hands and my hear the subwoofer to really see that it was disabled. What? Really? Okay, that's impressed me. In any case, in complex passages and explosions, I had at least to give a plus six on the soundbar bass boost. And I wasn't disappointed at all it's playing loud i actually play at 60 percent of the volumes that is already loud for me so we have really all the dynamic range that you need by having the subwoofer on the soundbars helps to deliver a visceral viewing experience subject was also able to disappear in the room if well placed of course and calibrated and remember that the subwoofer will need to be enabled from the applications to have a full calibrations Calibrations, calibrations. Playing at max volume, I had something like 90 dB, as we'll see it in the measures later. That's a lot. So you have all the dynamic range that you need. Of course, for a small, medium sized room. So in the end, med, so buffer, yes or no? Well, if you can afford it, yes, of course, right? I understand it is an extra cost. I compare it, this setup with my home theater. I end setup that is around 10K or maybe more. So really really a lot and i was not disappointed at all even without subwoofer something really funny i have to tell you my girlfriend want this soundbar because it's clean now i have actually a big center speaker i have amplifier on the left on the right receiver and she just she like it clean it's clean it's small it's for sure coming with a better wife acceptance factor you got into music school, right? His father was a dentist, East St. Louis. Invested in agriculture, made plenty of money. He sent Miles to Juilliard, School of Music, New York, 1945. Yeah. Regarding streaming music, is the only soundbar that was able to give me a truly remarkable high end audiophile experience. And yes, in Sennheiser, they know how the sound should be. I'm speaking about timber accuracy, I'm speaking about tonality, about balanced. I never test, all the soundbar that I tested was just sound like a soundbar. Was sound plastic, unnatural, like a soundbar, but not this one. They know how instruments and voices should sound realistic and without coloration. Watching, for example, Nora Jones live at Ronnie Scott's piano, bass, drums and vocals sounds incredibly good and realistic. And really not easy for such a technology to achieve all this quality in such a compact sites. And they did it. Also, streaming music with Spotify, for example, is intuitive. Is working back free and you will be able to stream your favorite music without any problem. Regarding the tonality is rich, balanced, it has a bass that is punchy, voices and instruments are clear with a good extensions, also on the treble that is slightly roll off of course for the technology as we will see in the measures. <laughs> Never fatigue and I really enjoy the sound quality, not only for background music but also just chilling on the couch as I do with my stereo and it has a sound stage that is really wide and you will actually enjoy left and right channels as in stereo hi-fi system. <laughs> Thank you.
When it comes to reviewing soundbar, I'm always happy because there is a big audience and I like to be open to all audio stuff. But there is something that unfortunately never convinced me and this is the Dolby Atmos effect. I always thought that for have a good Dolby Atmos experience, you need ceiling speaker. I was wrong. MBO Plus is able to reproduce audio effects from multiple directions, resulting in a truly immersive viewing experience. Most of effects are in front of me, above my head, and also around. There is a small dead point that is behind my head in these directions, probably because I have a lot of bass traps behind my head and behind the couch. So I had to remove them to test a more immersive experience. And probably this is my only drawback of these soundbars that doesn't have the possibility to add surround speaker. At least for now, I don't know if they will make it possible in the future. First movie that I immediately test was All Quiet on the Western Front. A beautiful movie that is set in Germany, Dolby Atmos, and is speaking about this soldier in the First World War. I really enjoyed the Dolby Atmos tracks with Ambioplast that not only captures perfectly the sounds of our war, but also of the desolations and loneliness in the German trenches. Another great movie test was Five Plots on Netflix. Rest in peace, Black Panther. Helicopter's intro scenes has a fully realistic direction, and I still fatiguing to believe that a soundbar could projecting such an holographic imaging. Also in the movie there are a lot of inside jungles scenes that are full of ambience effect. These cicalas, right? These insects that you hear it everywhere. And any, every single point of my rooms was full of this stuff, of insects, was full of insects, right? I was immersed in the story as if I was in the jungles with the characters. Beautiful. I also test the soundbars with the PlayStation 5 and Call of Duty Warzone 2. And here I have to say that the Ambio Plus subwoofer helps to give body and presence to the actions and shooting. Enemy locations was ultra clear and well reproduced almost 360 degrees around my head with a big soundstage. Great. So in the end, Ambio Plus is the new king of all the soundbars, it's taking the surround sounds to the next level, with an audiovisual experience that won't be forgotten. Not only regarding movie and games, but also just in stereo mode, where streaming your favorite music will be a truly high-end audiophile experience. Asking price is significant compared to other soundbars that probably are offering more for less money, but not with this high-end quality. From it out is everything, I hope you enjoyed the review, subscribe to the channel, hit the like buttons for support my work and see you soon, peace. Regarding subwoofer, I did an interesting video, I don't know, maybe it's interesting for you, because I know the audience from Soundbar and iFi Stereo could be, maybe, a little bit different, about 
how to integrate correctly a subwoofer in your hi-fi stereo setup. I will let it in descriptions. Anyway, most of you probably it will place the subwoofer in the front stage positions, right? So closer to the soundbar. Everybody's doing like that. But it could be, I'm not saying that it's like that, but it could be that this is not the best place for the subwoofer. Without go too much in deep in this stuff, otherwise this video will be 30 minutes long. So I did a video about it where I'm speaking about modal resonance and acoustic inside a room. What I want to say is that we have the possibility to place the subwoofer that is wireless where we want and you will need just one cable for the power. Let's make it really, really versatile. So try different positions, of course, if you have the possibility left, right, in the middle of the room. And it's beautiful because you don't need any signal cables that is going from the soundbar to the subwoofer. So try different positions if you can. More details in the measures. I usually don't measure soundbars, but this time I did it. And if you find the right spot, wow, you can move from have a nothing on the bass to an explosion inside your room, believe me. I performed some measures with Drumeco Wizard and Mini DSP microphone. I generally don't measure soundbars, but this time it's really worth to do it. So what we are going to see are the frequency response in my room. And of course, also I give a little bit of smoothing, otherwise we will not understand nothing. Let's start with the left channels. As we see, is the frequency response is, is pretty linear, really, really good. We have a slight little low above 10K. That's something for a soundbar really, really normal. It's following actually the way how our ear is capturing the sounds. So pretty linear from 200, uh, yes, let's say 200 Hertz to 10K. Then we have a small lack of energy around 150 and some boost around 67. That are, by the way, caused from my rooms and not from the soundbar. So this is pretty, pretty normal. So a beautiful frequency response that, of course, without subwoofer, it will roll off under 60 Hertz. Let's say 50. Yes, 50. And same thing for the right channels. Let's compare left and right. So we can see a really beautiful frequency response of left and right channels inside my room. A quick look of the distortions graph is pretty clean. So we have some small, small amount of distortions, of course, also coming from my room around 60 Hz. So really beautiful. Here we have also left and right channels with a plus six bass boost still without subwoofer. Let's compare actually the right channels with a plus six and without. Here we don't have nothing change on mid-range and tribbles and we got a plus six on bass, so under 100 Hertz. Regarding distortions, we moved a little bit up and this I feel a little bit also if you saw the binaural recording of John Williams where is without subwoofer and with plus 6 dB on the bass, we noticed that is a little bit boomy, right? So it looks like, as we will see later in the calibrations, the calibration doesn't correct this boomy frequency response around 60, 67 Hertz. That is a problem also of, uh, of my room. Moving on max volumes. So here we have a frequency response. I push it, the soundbar slightly to the limits and I almost got something around 85 decibel. So 85 decibel SPL, that's really a lot. So you can really play really loud with this soundbar. So let's compare the left channel still without subwoofer, but with the ambio mode on and off. So we can see that basically when the ambio mode is enabled, let's align the two first. Here we go. So as you can see with the ambio mode on, we don't get so much difference in the frequency response. But what you will get will be a full immersive experience with Dolby Atmos effects that really will make the difference when the ambio is on. So definitely there is no way to adjust this peak, boomy peak around 60, yes, 65 Hertz. The only way is to add a subwoofer to the soundbar. And I repeat, this is something that is coming from my room and not from the soundbar. Now let's check what will happen if we add a subwoofer to the soundbar. So here we have a 
left and right channel so we are playing together together also with the subwoofer that will be placed on the side of the room on the let's let's call it middle positions or lateral positions right so not on the front stage so a pretty linear frequency response with a roll off that will be really, really evident under 60 hertz let's compare it with left and right change the color let's put a green to this one okay so in blue we have the soundbar without subwoofer and in green with subwoofer so actually you will expect to have more bass right so it's nothing like that why nothing to do with the soundbar is just about configurations and placement from the application you have the possibility to play with the phase of the subwoofer if you don't know what is phase without go too much in details is about timing alignment let's call it like that so look what is happen if we give 180 degree phase to the subwoofer bang that's insane so we move from this one to this one and all this energy make a huge difference especially on movie let's put another color to the face 180 let's put red wow look at that really really amazing the performance of the subwoofer is really beautiful pretty linear from 20 hertz here we have the peak 35 is coming from my room and look what's happened actually on 65 hertz where we had problem right now it's also pretty linear with the rest of the frequency response so just amazing so remember to play with the phase also if you don't have the possibility to measures like i do you will just hear it in movie oh my god we make a huge difference another interesting measures is the subwoofer placed on the front so closer to the soundbar and in the middle of the room so in blue we have the subwoofer in the front closer to the soundbar and in red in the middle of the room so i prefer it really when it's in the middle because this this peak this peak problem at 35 hertz i feel it we have almost 5 db more something that i really don't like so i'm not saying that you don't have to place it on the front but for sure you have to play with the positions to achieve what is most closer to your personal taste thanks for watching and if you have any questions please just let me know